Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Looks like harvest is finally starting to slow down a little bit. There's still a little corn out there that needs harvested, and you know we've been getting a couple of rains here and there, so it's kind of slowed them down just a little bit. Um, thought I'd take you guys on a little adventure today. Got a service call for a John Deere S680. Customer says that uh, the feeder house won't raise. Well, it does it kind of intermittently, and he also said uh, the unload auger wouldn't swing too. So um, we got to figure out whether you know this problem is electrical or hydraulic. You know, since we've got um, the hydra handle, which sends a electronic signal to you know the armrest controller, and then it's broadcasting out a CAN bus message to um, basically run all the hydraulics. So you know we've got. Um, electronics controlling hydraulics so we need to figure out whether this is a hydro handle problem maybe it's a, um, a pump problem maybe it's a solenoid valve problem so um, I'm gonna take you guys along and see if we can't diagnose this welcome back to ZK Master Tech Okay, here she is. Well, I checked the hydraulic oil level and it was a little low, so I topped that off. We're gonna see what happens here. Okay, so we went into the MHC, which is the hydra handle. This is actually a controller. Um, we went into address 41, and I can push the button. There's the first raised detent, second raised detent. So those are working. Lowered first detent, second detent. The unload swing, second detent. So we're getting a good signal from the hydro handle. So now it seems like this might be a hydraulic problem. All right, so you can also go to the menu, let's get the combine, hit this button here, diagnostic readings. We can go down to header raise and lower. It shows the key switch is run. Go to the next page. Looks like our buttons are working. The feeder house went down there, but that won't, it won't raise. It went down, but it won't raise. The button's pressed. So here, our header raised solenoid output showing on. Showing a duty cycle, showing the raised current solenoid, showing amperage, but it's not moving. Take all the pressure off. 
All right, now we're gonna get our electric digital pressure tester out. There's the part number for it for you guys that have been asking me about that. Um, now we're gonna go to the primary valve block and we're gonna look for the DR that's marked IND. And I've got a 5,000 PSI gauge here. I'm gonna snap that on there and then we're gonna test some functions. Now we're gonna see if our uh, main pump is working like it's supposed to, so we'll test the steering and some other stuff. Okay, so I turn it to the 5,000 PSI. And we're gonna turn this on. So that tells us that the pump is working okay, but the problem is in the demand for the header lift. So now we're going to be uh, looking further into that. All right, so under the left-hand side of the feeder house, we have our header height valve block here. This is where we've got our header raise and lower solenoids. So we're going to um, go to this DR here on top, and we're gonna check the pressure at the valve block here. So I'm gonna snap my 5,000 PSI gauge right there, and now let's see what we got. So we're not getting a load sense signal back to the pump. So I've got my gauge snapped on the X52 here. That is our, our signal um, pressure coming out of this valve block. So um, we're gonna see. All right, let's fire this up. <laughs> pressure building sending the load sense signal back. Now I'm going to do the, the real fore and aft function uh, because that uses the Y1 pressure solenoid. should send a load sense signal back. There we go. That's what I should be seeing. Right now if I hold this button and press the raise, the feeder house raises and works and the header tilts. But if I let go of this button, we lose our load sense signal, and now nothing will work. So only whenever I, I fool the circuit and I load the circuit with load sense and I move the swash plate on the pump, that's the only way I can get the header to move. We are not sending a load sense signal back to the pump from the header lift valve. So let's take all the pressure off the circuit and take out the load sense check valve. So we got a load sense check valve right here. Um, if that is stuck, then that's not gonna allow a load sense signal back to the pump. So I'm gonna pull that out and see if it's stuck. Well, here it is. It doesn't appear to be stuck. I can stick my screwdriver in there and 
can move it back and forth. So I'm not, I don't think that's the problem. All right, so we're not getting a load, sig load sense signal back to the pump from a, using a header tilt function or a header raise function. So I had to kind of dive into the schematics and see you know, how those signal lines are coming back to the primary uh, control valve block here um, and try to see you know, what do those two circuits have in common and why whenever I engage my Y1 pressure activation solenoid, I can flood that circuit with pressure and give the pump load sense and then everything works whenever the Y1 is held down. So um, the one thing they have in common is this V7 sh uh, shuttle valve. So I'm gonna pull that out and see if I see anything there. And then there's also a couple more DRs um, where I can check pressure and see which side of this shuttle valve I'm not getting pressure back to this pump. I'm not sure if the schematic is drawn up wrong yet or not, but uh, I'm gonna do some more checking in this primary control valve block here. All right, so right here we got the V7 shuttle valve right here. I'm gonna pull that out and see what we got. All right, well that shuttle valve does have a ball inside there and it is moving, so it's not stuck. All right, since I wouldn't find anything back there at that V7 shuttle valve, I came up here, this is our rear, our wheel control valve block and that's where the load sense line's coming in. So I took that line off and I capped it off just to make sure we weren't bleeding off load sense in this valve and nothing worked. So what we're gonna do is I took the line coming from that valve block back here, I teed it into the load sense line going back. So we have isolated this valve block here. So now I'm gonna try my header tilt functions because tilt is being um, worked in here. So we'll see if we can build load sense pressure out of this and just bypass this block, send it back to the pump, and then we'll see if the if the tilt function works, then we know the problem has got to be in that valve block. There's gotta be a blockage in there or something. Okay, well, bypassing that header control valve block didn't change anything. So we have independently isolated the real valve block and the header control valve block um, independently and it didn't change anything. We cannot build load sense pressure with either one of those valves. So it's not just a problem in the header control valve block not allowing um, the load sense to come from the real valve block or through the, the header valve block. So there was another um, bleed down valve um, that I swapped out with the one on the real valve block. There's a, a bleed down valve block. It, it Basically what it does is it bleeds down the load sense pressure. Um, so, so the pump isn't at stroke all the time. So you gotta be able to bleed that load sense pressure off somewhere. Um, I thought maybe it was just bleeding off too much and it couldn't overcome the pressure. Um, so there's the same part number in the real valve block and the primary valve block. So I, I swapped those two, it didn't make any difference. So the only thing that I can think of that it could be is there's a internal leak, maybe it's a crack in the primary control valve block um, because I have isolated each one of those valve blocks and we're still not building load sense pressure, but that load sense pressure has to go through that primary control valve block. Um, so the customer is going to um, another dealer out of state to get this valve block because they're the only people that have one. Um, so he took off, he's driving like four or five hours to get this valve block. So um, <clears throat> I'm gonna meet him back here in the morning. We're gonna swap out that primary control valve block, which is just a bare block. So we'll have to swap all the valves and check valves and everything in it. So it's gonna take about an hour to swap that out, but uh, I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, so it's a new morning and we got a new valve block. So I'm gonna work on taking all these lines off all the electrical here and then we'll take this valve block off and then I'll put it on the bench and start transferring um, all the valves and everything over to the new one.
Okay, so we got all, everything swapped over to the new valve. And that was a lot of fun, making sure I got all the orifices and everything in place and nothing missing. So I was really careful with that. So now I'm just gonna get, you know, all the hoses and everything attached and fill this thing with oil. All right, got all the electrical hooked up, got all the hydraulic lines hooked up. Now I just gotta fill this thing with some high guard in the reservoir and fire this baby up. Okay, so previously when we were doing the testing, I noticed, you know, our stall pressure was only 2,800, which was a little low. So I wanted to make sure that our pump pressures were where they need to be. So I came up here to this compensation valve on the pump right here. There's a couple little Allen screws there. Um, I adjusted the high side to 3,100, which is the maximum you want to go, and adjusted our standby pressure to 450 PSI. So she ought to have some snap now. So I got the, uh, the gauge down here on my load sense on my header valve, and we're gonna see what happens now. So with the standby pressure being a little low, you know, that could affect how um, the load sense works because it's got to use that standby pressure whenever that raise valve opens. It's got to come back, go back through the load sense line and go back to that pump. And if that pressure isn't high enough, then um, it's not going to move that compensation valve and, and move the pump and make it go into stroke. So I wanted to make sure that standby pressure was good. And now, you know, if we don't, we don't have any internal leaks in this valve block here you know this thing should work now so fingers crossed all right we got her fired up here load sense is blood off let's hit header raise oh yeah boom header went up quick tilt oh she got we got tiltage See how quick that load sense builds? Now it's bleeding off. That's because of that bleed off valve. Raise again. Boom. See how it strokes that pump pretty quick? Real quick. Sweet. Boy, that was a hum dinger to figure out. It looks like we got her whipped. Heck yeah. Ooh-wee, was that a humdinger. You know, here I was beginning, I was thinking I was just gonna go replace a hydro handle and it turned into a load sense problem, which normally you don't have very many load sense problems on combines. They usually just work. Usually, you know, you got load sense problems on tractors. Um, see that all the time, but this is the, one of the most difficult load sense problems I've had to figure out on a, close center system on an S680 combine. So, you know, let's let's kind of digest what we learned here in this episode. So, you know, I learned that, you know, if you're dealing with a load sense problem in the combine, I think the first thing you need to check is standby pressure of that pump. We need to make sure that the standby pressure is high enough to where it's going to make the load sense work like it's supposed to so you know now that you know the things that I learned I will use on the next job uh, and that, that's kind of what being a technician is all about I've been doing I've been working on green iron for 12 years and I worked on uh, cars for four years before that and you're not gonna know everything you're every day you're gonna learn something so you got to take what you learn and apply it to the next problem. So, you know, things that I learned on this one, is on this particular combine, we need to check standby pressure, make sure standby pressure is where it needs to be. Um, but, you know, I just drove, I just went straight into the diagnostics for the header raise and the tilt not working. And when you run all the way through the diagnostics and you're not getting anywhere, you kind of got to refer to the schematic and 
and just start using your brain and thinking outside the box and doing pressure checks and and just referring to the schematics right so so the next time um, definitely going to check the standby pressure make sure that's good to go and then another thing um, that would have been nice if, if we could have figured out a way to put pressure onto the primary valve block where that load sense is going into the bottom of the valve block. If we could have came up with a way to put a port of power on there or maybe ran a hose um, front to an SCV of a tractor even and pressurize that valve block with a known good source, you know, shove 3,000 PSI up that primary valve block in that load sense circuit to see if we could actually get the pump into stroke manually that way. That would have been a good test to see. Then we would have known if we were leaking internally in that primary control valve block. So we replaced that primary control valve block because um, I believe that there could have been an internal leak inside there and that's why we couldn't build um, load sense pressure on the header lift and header tilt. Um, but we could build load sense pressure whenever we um, use the pressure compensation valve when we're doing functions like uh, unload swing, um, reel fore and aft, things like that. But that circuit's got more oomph. It even has an orifice in there to kind of tone it down a little bit. So I think that circuit had enough power to put enough pressure on that load sense line to the compensation valve to get the pump into stroke but since our header and, and tilt functions didn't have enough ump, whether the standby pressure was too low or we had an internal leak in that valve, it didn't have enough pressure to put the pump into stroke unless we used the, the Y1 pressure compensation valve. So, you know, we could have bypassed all that and just shove a known good pressure into that load sense port to see if we could have got the pump in stroke. Um, that would have told us whether or not we were leaking internally into that, um, that valve block. So learned a lot on this one. Um, and I hope you guys learned a bunch too. Maybe you guys uh, didn't know what load sense was or or anything like that so hopefully you guys learned something from it I know I did and I know the next time that uh, I get a combine that the header and the won't raise and, the, and it won't tilt but everything else works you know I'm gonna know exactly what to check and the next time it'll be that much faster and that's what being a good technician is all about is just learning from experience and from your mistakes and just moving forward so the next guy can get a little break, you know? So sometimes the you run into a problem and that customer's gotta pay a lot of time, money, parts to, to fix it. And then you gain that, that technician gains that experience and the next guy, you know, it, it's, it goes a lot faster and easier. But, you know, that's just the way this industry is and there's nothing you can do about it. We're, we're all learning and you just gotta take what you learn and apply it to the next job. So I uh, appreciate you guys watching and uh, I'll see you next time. I got some exciting things coming down the pipeline so you don't wanna miss it. And uh, keep that green iron moving and I'll see you on the next one.